the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 116 of The Daily Mother Swole. Huge, fucking huge, so big, bigger every day. I'm really getting bigger every day, and I don't sleep enough, and I should sleep more, and I eat strangely. I eat properly, but I don't know. I don't know what I do, but I'm just getting bigger. It's like I'm willing it. I'm just willing myself size. I'm willing myself size. I'm here today to help you will some size onto your bodies as well. I'm vegan, aren't I? Yeah. Yes, I am a vegan. I am a strict vegan. I just gain muscle by eating grass. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of this, the meat and potatoes. Let's talk about pull-ups. I've talked about pull-ups before on the Daily Swole. I've mentioned negatives. I'm a big fan of pull-ups. I'm a big fan of pull-ups for size and for mass. A lot of bodyweight exercises are great, uh, but they do have their limitations for size you can build. One of the great things about pull-ups is that it's a total body exercise. Even though it doesn't work the legs, it still works the core, and anything overhead really targets the entire core structure from the pelvis all the way up to the cervical spine. So if you want to build muscle, you need to be able to do pull-ups. Pull-downs are great, but pull-ups are the king. If you can't do pull-ups, look back at my daily swoles for how to do negatives. Negatives work in the eccentric part of the motion, like stepping up on a chair, grabbing the bar at the top, and then lowering yourself slowly for five to 15 seconds are great for mass. And also, using doing our performing weighted pull-ups. Performing weighted pull-ups uh, with, you know, let's say a belt with plates between your, your thighs or holding a dumbbell between your thighs or your feet, that's a great way to... Uh, also increase size for pull-ups. So if you're looking to build width with your lats, believe it or not, this is for men, this is for women too, because women want physique. People want shape. Men and women alike. Men men want shape, women want shape. And the way to get shape is to create that V taper, wider shoulders, wider upper body, and then thinner waist, and then wider hips, you know, muscular hips. So you have that hourglass and you have that shape. So women if you're and men, if you're looking to create more of a figure and get out of that blocky look, you need to work your delts. You need to work your shoulders, the lateral part of your shoulders. You need to work your upper back, your lats. You need to eat better so your waist gets tighter. And you have to work your legs. You have to work your hips. So you have to work these areas that give you not the illusion, but give you that aesthetic appeal. So that's why people that do chest and biceps a lot actually shortens you up and shrinks you up because it pulls you forward and it front loads the top, the front part of your body. A lot of people think I weigh more than I do. A lot of people think I, you know, lift more than I do. I'm a bodybuilder. I'm a bodybuilder. I lift heavy and I'm strong, but I don't go for strength. I don't go for the norm. I go for balance. When you're balanced, when you have good aesthetic appeal, you don't you look bigger than you are. You look more balanced, you look more soothing, you have a better body. People just gravitate towards your physique because you're balanced. If you see someone that's huge upper body and has no legs, even if you don't know fitness, it just looks weird to you. You'd be like, oh, that guy's got skinny legs. Even if you're not a bodybuilder, you're not a bodybuilding judge. So people that never work out will notice that and you'll say that. You're like, oh, that guy's got skinny legs because it looks weird. Or if someone has like a huge shoulders in the front and they have no posterior deltoid, I hate that. Even to this day, whenever I do shoulders, I always do side and rear. I almost ignore anterior deltoid. That's why I have such good shoulder development. That's why I have such good like posterior deltoid development is because I, I don't necessarily avoid front deltoid, but I really don't train it. I don't isolate a lot. I really don't do a lot of front deltoid. Sometimes I do front raises. I do shoulder pressing. Rarely do I do overhead pressing. I really stay away from front deltoid for a reason, because of aesthetic appeal and for balance, because most of the time during chest pressing and during any kind of pushing movements, you're going to get a lot more anterior deltoid development. You're doing more stuff to the front every day, and you don't do enough side and lateral, um, side lateral, uh, lateral or side deltoid um, or posterior. So you don't focus on those enough, 
and while you're driving your car, while you're at your computer, you're rounded, anterior deltoid, working and just getting tighter. And then you're doing chest pressing, getting tighter, getting tighter, getting more developed. So you get flat on the back and you just kind of get more tight on the front and it pulls you forward. It affects your posture. You get more rounded. You look all hunchback. You get like that kyphotic posture. It's terrible. It's slouchy. It makes you look tiny and it causes more risk for shoulder injury and neck pain. So you're really working a lot of things the wrong way. You're increasing your risk of pain, chronic pain, and you're really you're putting yourself at risk for acute injury, like hurting your shoulder or popping a rotator cuff or getting biceps tendonitis and all that stuff. So it looks crappy and people notice it. The body is attracted to aesthetic appeal. So women, you need to do pull-ups. You need to practice your negatives. Women should be able to do a pull-up, at least one, at least one. You should be able to be doing, uh, you know, at, those pull-downs are great. The assisted pull-up machine is decent. Those bands that help you do pull-ups are decent, but nothing is going to be as effective as doing a negative. So if you can find a way to do a negative on one of those like pull-up assist machines where like you have the kind of the chair when you'd be like standing up on it, um, that would be uh, beneficial. You can step up on the little steps they have, put your knees on it and lower yourself slowly. Yeah, I have um, I have uh, the, the pull-up negatives that's on the, that's a daily swole like in the 40s or something like that. That's, um, so those of you that are asking, I could do a video on it. I mean, I'll probably go back onto it again, but I already have a video, uh, daily swole. I think it's in the forties. It talks about pull-ups. It's talking about eccentric training. There's a couple episodes around there. And what I have to start doing is remembering to put links like in these videos, in the description of those other videos, but I generally, I forget. So check that out. If you're listening on SoundCloud or iTunes or Stitcher, uh, you're watching this on YouTube, check my playlist for Daily Swole. I think it's in the 40s uh, about pull-ups. You could probably also do a search. So these concepts, the concepts of making your body look strong, it will be strong. When you're lifting weights, you will be strong. You're going to get stronger. But at the same time, you need to look a certain way. And if you train and it's not, it's not going to be, uh, how should I say this? It's not a superficial way to train. It's strange. I'm going to explain something to you, and it makes a lot of sense once I get through it. You want to train superficially. And I know I talk about a lot of corrective exercise, work in stabilizers, which are very important, of course. You want to train superficially, and here's the reason why. If you look in the mirror and you have balance, if you develop every muscle evenly, you will have better posture, you will have less pain, you will have a better physique, you will be stronger overall, you will have a less risk of an injury right off the bat because you are training for balance. If you look in the mirror and you look balanced based on like, you know, like, like a Michelangelo drawing or painting, you will be balanced. If you work every muscle evenly and you develop every muscle relative to the other muscle, so you don't have a massive posterior deltoid and no anterior. You have balance. Each muscle is developed and strong the way it should be. You work for balance. You will have strength. You will have posture. You will have all of that to the best of your ability. So make sure that any muscle, any weak point that you have in your, in your body, focus on that. Do that first. Make that a strong point. Make that a priority. Do that first in your routine. If you have weaker calves and smaller calves, train those first when you go to the gym. If you have weaker abs and you do more core training, do that first when you go to the gym. Don't leave it to the end when you're going to want to leave the gym early and you want to cut it short and you cut that short. Strengthen those weak points. Train areas that are generally under-trained, that generally get left in the wayside. Whenever I do shoulders, I always start with either rear or lateral. You'll see my workout videos on YouTube. Uh, those of you that might be new to this channel, youtube.com slash solnormous. My exercise videos, whenever you see me do a shoulder workout, you'll notice I rarely do anterior or I really heavily load all my workouts with side and rear. And I just do that automatically now. I do that automatically. So make sure that you work for, yeah, work on your core strength, work on your, your width of your upper body, your shoulders and your lats. Ladies, the same thing. You don't have to get massive lats, but being able to do a pull-up will work every muscle and muscles you never even knew existed in your upper back, in your middle back, in your core, even to your pelvis to stabilize. A lot of times when people start doing pull-ups or trying to do them, they start swinging. They're swinging back and forth because they don't have core stability and they don't have that coordination from the upper body all the way down to the base of the core. So it's very important that you're able to do a pull-up. Check out that daily swole. Make sure you practice your pull-ups. It's great for size. You can load it up and you can crush, crush, crush for mass. And then you can also 
use the pull up for aesthetics. So you don't always just have to go absolutely massive. It's not all about building massive muscle. That's going to come down to how many reps you're doing. That's going to come down to how many calories you're consuming. If you're a female, you're not going to get huge, not producing testosterone like a guy is. So there are a lot of other concepts and aspects that come into building muscle from pull-ups. But doing a pull-up is a functional exercise. It's just like a push-up. It might not be your main source of activity, but you should be able to do a push-up. You should be able to do a pull-up. And you could train a push-up the same way as a pull-up, ladies, um, doing negatives from the top to the bottom. And um, it's really important to do bodyweight exercises. And I'll be coding over this a lot more in the future, as always. But make sure you use negatives. Use eccentric training. Watch my other daily swells on eccentric and pull-ups. That's a great way to get started, but make sure you are training and practicing your pull-ups. If you can't do a pull-up, that should be the primary goal and that should be the primary focus of your effort for the beginning of your workouts when you do your back training, okay? It will help everything else. It'll help your coordination, it'll help your balance, and it'll help your overall force production and neuromuscular uh, intra and intermuscular coordination, meaning the muscle the motor units, the nerves that are firing within a muscle, and also the coordination of the synchronization of firing for muscles working together, different muscles at the same time. Because you have a lot of muscle in the body, and almost all of them are used to produce force and to stabilize during a pull-up. I'll stay for a few minutes after on Busker and Periscope. Thank you for joining me live on Busker and Periscope. Thank you for checking me out on YouTube and listening and tuning in on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher Daily Swole. So make sure if you can't watch this, if you can't watch the replay, if you missed any part of it, go on SoundCloud, go on iTunes and listen. This is awesome as a podcast. So if you do a long commute and you haven't sent, you know, you haven't watched my other daily swoles, start at the beginning, listen through them. You will learn a lot of stuff and you'll catch up real quick uh, to the vernacular and to all this um, cumulative knowledge. So we're just developing knowledge, rehashing it, splicing it, going over it in different ways because fitness is a learning experience. And as you get more experience and as you practice this stuff on your own, and as you learn this, every time we talk about these topics, it's going to sound a little different. You're going to know it a little better. You're going to have a different concept. And then when you ask questions, you'll be more educated and you'll get better answers and then you get better results. So it's always a constant learning process, but the more you learn, the better questions you ask, and then the more you'll learn and the more questions you'll have, but you'll hone it, you'll hone it down. So I just saw a question. I missed it, but stick around. Ask that again. Again, I'll say for a few minutes. Check me out on YouTube, youtube.com slash Solnormous. Subscribe, like my videos. Uh, Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Swolnormous on YouTube, and also check me out on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, the whole nine. Okay? Thank you for joining me. Episode 116 of The Daily Mother Swole. See you tomorrow for episode 117. Peace out. Have a great Tuesday.